I hold a PhD in psychology, and I currently have a private consulting practice. Sports psychology is um, a subgroup of the field of psychology that applies the, the theory, the principles, and the strategies used in clinical and counseling psychology to, to sports, to athletes and coaches. Unlike other fields of psychology, it actually originated in the physical education, uh, sports science, and kinesiology departments. So they weren't at all psychology related at all. They're more sport related. And most of the faculty positions uh, in sports psychology are in these physical education, sports science departments. There's a cliche that people become psychologists to figure themselves out. And I had one of those experiences. I was a high-level ski racer in my, in my young, younger years. And at the time, I was, I was quite good. I was about 40th in the nation in Salm, if you, if you know anything about ski racing. And, but I was what was called a head case or a mind job. That is, my head got in the way of my ski racing. I, I got very nervous before races. I, got, I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself. And then one summer, I, I took a course related to sports psychology at a local college. It exposed me to a lot of the techniques that, that I now use with, with athletes with whom I work. And the following year, I had a career year. I, I jumped up in the, to the top 20 in the nation. Um, I competed internationally. I, uh, I had a, a ton of great results. But even beyond the results, what was most compelling for me, and I think probably what caused me to develop such a great belief in the field, is that when I got in the starting gate before this experience, I, I, I had so little confidence that I basically assumed that I was going to fail. Whereas following this experience in being exposed to sports psychology, I got in the starting gate and I basically knew I was going to win. Now that didn't mean, that didn't guarantee I was going to win, but it gave me the real belief that I could be successful and it is no doubt that it translated into real tangible results. I don't have an average day in that my practice has three main parts. If I'm not seeing clients on any given day, I'll be here in front of my computer writing. Uh, again, I just finished a new parenting book. Um, I've been asked to write two chapters for two sports psychology textbooks. And, and I blog uh, usually once or twice a week for, for several sites. If I'm speaking, I'll usually uh, travel somewhere and then um, spend time at a school or with an athletic program or a, a sports team and speak to different groups, such as the athletes. Um, I'll speak to the coaches as a group as well, and often to the parents of the athletes, so, so parents can help their athletic kids achieve their goals and have great experiences. Finally, finally, uh, when I work one-on-one, -on -one, again, I will often travel. I have clients all over the country. Well, I'll go and spend several days with them, um, both off in, in the sports setting, where they're actually practicing and training, um, plus uh, away from the sports uh, uh, setting, uh, where we sit down in an office or some such, and I work with them on a variety of psychological issues related to what's impacting them in their sport. A lot depends on what people are interested in. If they're interested perhaps in an academic position, uh, where they're just working with athletes in a consulting situation on mental skills, then the physical education sports science side is, is totally appropriate. However, if they want a, uh, if they want to maybe have more of a, a, a consulting practice with athletes, then a clinical or counseling degree is, uh, is more useful and, and more practical. First of all, it definitely helps to have some kind of high-level athletic experience. A big thing with, with, in sports psychology is that the athletes are pretty skeptical about, about the mental side of sport because it's not something they can touch or measure. And so having, having credibility with athletic, um, competitive athletic or coaching experience is valuable. Um, other qualities is you have to be very patient. This is a tough field to work in. There aren't people knocking at your door constantly asking for, to work with sports psychologists. Another thing is you have to have a lot of different skill sets and the ability to, to, to broaden your, your, um, your, your field of, of interest. As an example, though sports psychology is still quite a large part of my practice, um, if for those who visit my website, they will see that I also do a considerable amount of work in the corporate world, taking the, idea, taking the ideas that I've learned about um, performance, individual and team performance, and applied it to the business world. I've also, I also do a lot of parenting work. So really the way I'm able to make, a, I think, what for me is a very comfortable living and to be in my own, by, by my own definition of success, 
is by being able to tap my skill sets and apply them to a lot of different areas. Well, I suppose it's, it's what I tell so many people who contact me, and I get emails from, from young people, students, and young professionals, several every week, uh, who want to know how to do what I do. And I guess it's uh, just a real dose of reality, which I guess can be a good thing and a bad thing. I, I suppose maybe if I'd known how difficult it was going um, uh, to be uh, to, to make a living in this field, uh, I might not have chosen the field. Um, at the same time, uh, one of the things that I've really been fortunate about is I have a tremendous passion for what I do. I think a little bit of a warning of, of the challenges ahead. And back then, th there weren't many people I could email or contact. They didn't have email back then, I should say, or, tell, or call uh, to ask, what's the field like? Uh, what do I need to do exactly in terms of my education and training? So I suppose the biggest piece of advice is do your homework. Really learn about the field. Um, make sure you have a realistic idea about what it takes to be successful. Um, make sure that, that the training you receive, the education and training you receive, is going to give you the skill sets you need. And in fact, one other side note that uh, is, uh, is uh, as apropos here is recognizing that having a consulting practice is a small business. And to take some business courses. Uh, I've been fortunate during the course of my career to, to have people from the business world who, could, who mentored me, to help me uh, think about what I needed to do to sell myself. Well, oddly enough, there hasn't been a ton of change. The reality is the field of psychology doesn't change that much. There aren't major advances in, in therapeutic techniques like there are in medicine and, and, and other fields. What ultimately causes development in a field or in an individual professional is simply experience. I, I remember getting out of graduate school with my PhD and thinking, oh, I'm a doctor now, you know, I know everything. And then um, I remember it was about seven years later that I realized that just after seven years in practice, I finally was getting pretty good at what I did. And, and, it, and it takes time to develop that skill set. And over these 25 years that I've been practicing, what I found is that, that, uh, that just through my interactions with, with clients, through my speaking, through my writing, um, I develop new ideas. Um, it's a very creative, innovative process. So even though, even though the field hasn't evolved dramatically, what, ha what I think has evolved dramatically is, is my own capabilities as, as a practitioner. Over the years, the field is becoming more accepted. Uh, the fact is now pretty much every Olympic team has a sports psychologist involved on the pro tennis circuit, a pro golf tour. There, there are many sports psychologists involved. Uh, as far as the, the big, big time uh, professional sports leagues, NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, uh, pro hockey, there's certainly some involved, but still not quite there. Uh, I think more and more as, as the pressures become greater, as the, the, the level of performance gets higher and higher, there is going to be a need for, for competent sports psychologists. Because what's become very clear now is that the level, at, in, in, in any sport, at the highest level, the, uh, the level of performance is incredible. The athletes are so close in so many ways that ultimately what enables one athlete to succeed to win on the day of the, their Olympic event or in the World Series is not their physical capabilities, it's not their equipment, it's do they have the mental capabilities. So it is really the final piece of the puzzle. Despite sort of the cautionary nature of some of my comments, uh, I feel that I've had an incredible experience in, in my career. Uh, I don't have any real regrets in the course I've taken. And, and when I began, I didn't have a clear path of what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do sports psychology. I knew I wanted to work with, with, with high-level athletes. But I never knew that I would end up working in the business world or writing parenting books some of the, or blogging for, for, for some big uh, national sites. And, uh, and so the main thing is it's got to start with the passion and the desire because People who are interested in the field, who want to have a successful career, they're going to have to put in a lot of time, make a lot of sacrifices. But as is my point here, what an incredible opportunity I feel I've had to, to help people uh, in, the helping, in, the, in the psychological profession uh, and also be able to meet some incredible people, very famous ones, Olympic gold medalists and star, star athletes, as well as some little kids who are just starting out and to be able to travel the world and, and really create a life for myself 
that uh, gives me both financial stability, but also a lot of freedom where I can spend time with my family and, and on other aspects of my life that are, that are not work-related.